Now, in this, the modern era of digital recording and digital audio workstations and audio interfaces, is there really a place for analog mixing desks? Well, I think there is. Let's have a look. So here we are with then a small mixing desk. At the moment, you're listening to this presentation via this microphone, which is actually going via this small desk and into my computer. And it sounds properly good. If I just turn the level right up on this channel, you can hear that my voice has gone up a bit. But there's very little in the way of extra noise and hiss and stuff. So actually, this is performing well. We've got to remember that specifications in a manual they're not the be all and end all actually it's all about what your ears say if they say it's okay it's fine now why would we have something like this well let's consider if you have a stereo input sound card but just two inputs on mics and two outputs running into your speakers you think well i want to connect uh, an old ipod or a keyboard or something else that I can't plug straight into the computer or where I have to keep unplugging cables. And that's where something like this comes in. Now at the moment, this is feeding its stereo output into my computer. I have here an iPod lead, remember these? And so I've got, I can just put my iPod through it. So I have the control then to have several things plugged into my mixer that can then feed the inputs of the computer. Now there's purists out there will saying, but why would you use an analog mic preamp when you have mic preamps that are built into your audio interface? Well, I must remind you that those audio, those mic inputs on an audio interface are still analog. The Once you've gone past the volume control, then it turns it into digital information doesn't always figure that the inputs of an audio interface are going to be better than a mixing desk. Of course, they might be slightly less noisy, but you might like the color, for example, that something like this would impart on it. Now, this is the Behringer Zenix 1622 FX. I've had it over 10 years, used it every weekend for gigs and stuff. And as you can hear, it's absolutely fine. We have effects built in, so you can have your reverbs. For example, you can just put that sort of thing on it. How lovely. Now you may like a particular effect in here that you want to commit to computer when you're recording. I mean, I would caution against recording any effects actually printing onto the computer because you want to have, be able to have that uh, decision to make afterwards perhaps. But there are lots of things you can do with this. Now, at the moment I've got four mic channels, for example, and I've got four pairs of inputs. I've got my effects. I've got the ability, if I wanted to, to record to another device using this cable here. I can do anything I want to do. Now, this is really, something like this stops you from having to use things like patch bays. Now, patch bays, where you plug your jacks, jack leads and link stuff up they are fairly awful unless you've got 600 quid to buy a proper bantam patch bay which you'd have in a professional recording studio so patch bays those sort of jack to jack ones that you can buy they just add problems they sound great and they last for a short while and then you start having problems that will sort of we have to keep sort of cleaning them up now an alternative of that of course is to have all of your patching done here where you can decide which input you're going to have that goes to your computer and exactly what you do to it now things like the when you use an old keyboard for if you've got an old roland juno or something that's got a jack output and you want to record that to the computer, but maybe there's not enough level on that keyboard to get a good sound on the computer, you can plug it into something like this. Ideally, something like a DI box. Now, I've done a video on my channel about DI boxes. You can see that in the link below. What are they for? What do they do? This is a mono DI box, so you plug your keyboard on in here, and then it turns it into a mic signal, which then you can plug into your desk. Uh, you can have stereo versions like this, which is 
this is a Samson one, so you've got two channels here. So you can, if you've got an old stereo keyboard that's not quite so good at, at, at sort of output level, older keyboards are also quite noisy. So really what you want to do is to turn the keyboard flat out. And then you have a bit of sort of pre-EQing that you can do here before you've even gone to the computer. Of course you can do it all on playback, but things like this are indispensable in the modern world of computer recording, especially if you've just got a two-in, two-out sound card.